every time that I play it. I love it. I love the extended version, even though it may be too long for other people, but hey, I, I still like it. I still enjoyed it. But anyway, since we didn't get any prayer requests, doesn't mean that we shouldn't pray. Let's go to the Lord and with prayer. Homely, gracious Father, Lord, I come to your throne, Lord. Lord, for whatever you have to say here tonight, Lord, help us to open up our hearts, Lord, and to be able to receive all the information, not just some, not just most, but all the information in our hearts. And hopefully we can apply it through whatever season, whatever storm, whatever that we may be going through, Lord. Because you call us to be doers of of your word and not merely hearers our actions speak louder than our own words lord so hopefully we'll be able to take up our cross and follow you daily lord not just on a friday night not just on a sunday but every day of our lives so hopefully we can be able to apply Whatever this information that you'll be able to receive, even if we may heard it from somewhere else, or maybe a re be a reminder, but it might be you trying to speak to one of us, or all of us, or several of us tonight, Lord. So hopefully we can be able to receive it. And I do always holy grace name. Amen and a a a men. Welcome, welcome everybody. I am. Hi, I'm Hufflepuff. I am the leader of this online ministry. And we have been going through, for some of y'all that may not know, or have, we have been going through the book of Luke. Now, we're only going to be taking uh, two scriptures here, two two verses here. That's, that's it. Um, the reason because of that, because uh, the next few verses can be a little bit uh, complex, so we're trying to take this book of Luke at time. So, um, uh, hopefully we should be in chapter 4 soon. I forgot how many chapters there are on Luke. <laughs> I totally forgot the top of my head. But um, I, want, I usually what I do before doing the sermon, before doing all this, I usually like to give some sort of scenario of something about gaming. Before we dive into scripture. Uh, the first thing. Have you ever. Like listened to a gaming company. And let's say they made promises. They're like. Oh we promise to put this in our game. Like we promise. I remember so long for Halo Infinite. I'm not a Halo person at all. Alright. I think I only played like the first Halo. Maybe the second Halo. And that, that may be it. <laughs> Um, I think, but in their, in their thing, they promise, they promise us, Hey, we're going to get co-op. We're, we're going to get co-op. Don't worry. We're going to get co-op. And, and guess what? Guess what? They broke, they broke their promise. I know that's such a shame. Well, it doesn't bother me cause I'm not a Halo person. So I could be like, sucks for you. <laughs> I, I may have not put it that way. Um, <laughs> but yeah, gaming companies that promise something and end up breaking the promise. Because as us, as gamers, you know, we have favorite franchises that we followed along. Like earlier today, I was doing a podcast on Silent Hill. I never thought that series will ever come back because it's Konami. I mean, that should just speak volumes for people that know what Konami did, especially back in 2015. I'm never going to forget what they did. You know, they hurt fans across the globe, including myself. But they have somehow regained my... They, they regained me a little bit. I have been buying some of their products. I mean, I bought their Contra collection. I bought their Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles collection. So, you know, I have been, I have been buying those. So, but all of a sudden they're making a comeback and it's like, okay, are you, it's because they're, because as, as us as fans, we want franchises to continue. Some of because we might have, you might have a favorite franchise that might be dead in the water that, that you would like to continue, you know. 
like for me for instance I would love I won't be I won't be honest I would love to see another Jack and Dexter game are we ever gonna see another Jack and Dexter game probably not but the thing is to us as fans because we're kind of because we're consumers to them you know and they release out products that we either buy or don't want to buy. Like Pokemon that's going to come out next month. Everyone's going to gobble at it. I mean, you know that. I know that. It's Pokemon. I mean, I'm going to get it. I'm probably going to get Violet after just worrying about it so much. But I'm probably going to get Violet here. Pokemon Violet. That's probably what I'm going to be getting. Ah! <laughs> but the thing is, is that they have to gain your trust back. And with Jesus, you don't have to gain your trust back. Jesus, God himself, he never broke the promise. Like, he, like, like let's dive into scripture. Whether y'all want to follow along on screen or if y'all have a Bible, so we're in Luke chapter 3, verses 21 through 22. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying... Heaven was open, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in a bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Um, last week, and we've been talking a good bit about this since we've been going through the book of Luke as baptism. For some of y'all that may not know what baptism is, it is basically a form of repentance. You are dying your old self. You're going in the water. You're basically publicly declaring your faith. You're going in the water. You're washing out all the old stuff that you used to do, everything like that, and you're coming out as a new creature in Christ. That is basically what baptism is. It is basically a symbol. And some people even ask me this. Why did Jesus get baptized? Ain't he perfect? Ain't he the old almighty? No, why did he do it? Well, the thing is, the reason why he did it is to set an example for all of us. The thing is, if Jesus didn't do it, then he wouldn't make us do it. That's the thing. And it's been talking about this over and over and over. And, P and, and the first thing, there, there's three points I want to mention. I keep, I, I, I keep forgetting to do points. The first one that I want to do is being obedient to him. Because in baptism, like I just said, you're laying down your life. Don't you do that for significant others? Just think about it. Just think about it. You know, you love this person. Ho hopefully, hopefully you do. I don't, I don't know what you do. But hopefully you love this person and want to get married to that person. You try to lay down your life for that person. I mean, have you ever heard that song? Uh, what's that song? Like, I throw a grenade for you. I, it, it's an old song. It's a it's a completely old song. I know, I know I know I know it's a it's a it's a really old song. I believe it came out in two thousand nine. Holy crap! I'm old. That doesn't matter. <laughs> but the thing is, you laid down your life for your man or woman or your boyfriend, girlfriend, fiance, husband or wife. Why? Because you love them. You treasure them. You know, you want to spend the rest of your life with them. And that should be the same with us, with Jesus. We should be able to lay down our own lives for him and to be able to do that. But sometimes we don't do that. Let, let's be let's, like, I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to be frank. I'm going to be honest here. So, you know, we, we'd rather be honest here, right? We rather we we, we want to be frank here, right? I feel like some of us only do it on the Sundays. I really, legitimately do. I've seen so many people that would out there and go party on a Saturday night, get drunk, get wasted, whatever. I don't know what y'all do on Saturday night. I mean, I have Dungeons and Dragons, so you know where I'm at a Saturday night. <laughs> D and D, but people get drunk and say like, "It'll be fine. I'll I'll get straight with the Lord on Sunday. It'll be fine." You know, and to me, that's like just because it's a sin and just because God will always forgive you doesn't mean that you're living a godly life. That's the thing. You can't just go to church every Sunday and expect you be Christian. 
Like I even asked, have you ever have a personal relationship with Jesus? And I would get the answer saying, well, I've been to church my whole entire life. And I'm like, that's cool, but that's that's not what I ask. Like, did I ask how long you've been going to church? No, I've asked how long you've been knowing Jesus. Jesus is not a physical building. Let me let me let me let me say that now. Jesus is not a physical building. And I feel like that's what people that goes to church saying, like, I have to go to church or I messed up in the head. Like, I have to go. The thing is, you don't have to go to church to get saved. You don't have to go to church to read the Bible. I mean, the Bible is, is y'all see it on the screen, Bible Gateway, free website. Like, you can easily just read the Bible, worship music. Y'all saw me playing worship music earlier through YouTube. Easy to do just in your room. It doesn't have to be at a church. Some people feel like, oh, I can only pray at a church. Oh, I can only worship God at a church. No, I'm sorry to tell you that. No. Like, I was just worshiping. Like, I was just listening to the, the, the Waymaker song. Like, ain't he the Waymaker? Ain't he's our promise, our keeper? Ain't he's the light in the darkness? Ain't that who he is? Because it is. It is. And I feel like we just don't lay down our life with to him. I feel like we just simply go back to our old ways. Because our human flesh is like, you know, it's fine. That's how this that's how devil is. That's how Satan is. It's fine. You know, it's fine to drink a liquor or two. It's fine to smoke weed. You know, it's it's fine. The world's doing it. No no harm to you. But thing is, Jesus knows your heart and your intentions. I said that literally in the prayer before we even started. He knows your heart and your intentions. And we're supposed to be following him. We're supposed to be taking up our cross daily. Daily. Not monthly, not weekly, not yearly. Daily. Day by day. And I feel like we just don't do that. Like, I'm sorry, I'm going to be honest here. I've seen Christians that done that. That was sit there and say, like, it's fine. I go to church Sundays. It's fine. And I'm like, it's not. Because you're supposed to live your life for Christ. I mean, don't you do that for your significant other? Don't you try to take her, take him or her out on dates or, you know, food? You know, treat her nice or treat him nice? I feel like we should do the same with Christ. I really legitimately do. Like, take time in your day. Pick up the word, you version. It's a great Bible app. And you know what? It has ton, tons of devotional plants on it. Of all kinds of different kinds of de devotional plans. And I've been posting the devotional plan each week from the YouVersion app. In the Discord server. I have been posting those because I enjoy them. I love their devotions. The last one that I put was a failure. Because I feel like we fail. And, and failure, it, it can't be a void. I'm sorry to tell you this. Failure can't be a void. Why? Because we're human beings. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to fail. It can happen in relationships. It can happen in work. It can happen everywhere. Literally. literally. But the thing is, we're supposed to be corrected. And we're supposed to learn from our failures. And to keep on going. So that we can be able to overcome it. But I, but honestly, I feel like because you gotta lay down your life for Christ. You you do. I mean, look look in the scripture. I'm gonna read it again. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. 
And as he was praying, heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in a bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are the Son whom I love, with who I am pleased. You see, Jesus is being obedient to his Father. You know, he didn't have to do that. He was perfect, right? He could have just done anything he wanted to. He could have just said, No, Dad. You know, because I feel like we do that to our dads, right? We go, no, Dad, I'm not going to go to bed at 10. I'm going to stay up all night eating junk food. I do whatever I want. I, I feel like kids would probably do that. I mean, I, I think I probably did that at some point. I don't fully remember. <laughs> but Jesus didn't do that. He didn't just say, no, Dad, I'm not going to get baptized. No, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to go sit there and go have fun with people. But the thing is, Jesus didn't do that. He was still obedient. Even to the death of the cross, he was still being obedient. And I wonder how far we will go to be obedient to him. I wonder how far we will go. Like, how far? That's a question. That's between you and God. Not between you and me. But it's between you and God. How far are you willing to go for him? It's kind of like the same thing when you say about your significant other. How far are you willing to go for her or for him? It's kind of the same value when you think about it, doesn't it? It's the same thing. Because Jesus was hurt. So many things were happening. And then right there on the cross, nailed. And still being obedient. And then when those people were persecuting him. Like yes, Jesus was persecuted as well. Don't think you were just persecuted. I, I got persecuted too. Some people may not like you. Some people you will just not get along. And Jesus could sit there and say, screw off y'all. When they said there, hey, prove to us. If you're the son of the living God, if you're all this... Then prove it. They're asking proof. And Jesus didn't say screw you all. He said pray for them as they do not know what they're doing. That is what he said. That is literally what he said. Because they didn't understand what they were doing. They didn't fully understand what Jesus had to do for every single one of us. They didn't understand at that point in time. They didn't. So, how far can we go to be obedient to Him in our own lives? Of whatever that we're going through. How far are we willing to go? Like, once you fail, is that it? Once that one hiccup or that one bump in the road and that's it? Are you saying that you're done and willing to throw in the towel? Because Jesus could have done that. I mean, we're talking about relationships here, right? Do y'all remember Judas? Remember the person that betrayed Jesus for like 30 pieces of silver? He still loved him. He still showed him love. He still washed his feet. He could have just said, get out of here. Because I feel like that's what we would do. And that's not being like Jesus. He laid down our life for us, so why can't we for others? You know, don't you have friends or family? It doesn't have to be a significant other. I know I kept on saying significant other a lot, but it doesn't have to be like that. It could be family. It could be friends. You know, dad, mom, aunt, you know, grandpa, uh, nephews, you know, brothers, sisters. Or your best friend from high school or college or, you know, or whatever. You know, don't you want to lay down your life for them because you, you, because you care about them, right? We should do that for each for each other. 
we should do that. And the last, and the, and the second point that I wanted to make is the promises. And I was talking this about this a little bit about video games earlier. But even relationships have promise. Do you know how many exes that I had? And I know I said this time and time again, and I still will. Where they promise, saying like, oh, I'll be with you forever and ever. And guess what? That doesn't happen. They broke up with me. They break their promises. Not only gaming companies breaking their promise, but I got exes that break their promises. And you know what happens to exes? Do you want to know? You just become complete strangers. Like, after, the, after that relationship's done, y'all just become complete strangers. I mean, how often do y'all talk to any of y'all's exes? None of my exes wanted to talk to me. I still try to be friends because I'm not a blocking person. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I don't like blocking people. But the thing is, they were done with me. It was on them, not on me, even though we were in a relationship. But they will, they will break their promise. Saying like, yeah, we'll get married. Oh, here comes the breakup. Uh-oh. And I'm not going to go into the tons of reasons why I get breakup. That's, that's, that's my personal life. But I'm just saying... The promises. As us, as humans, we're going to break those promises. It's going to happen. But why? Because we make mistakes. I mean, we can try to promise. Some of us promise. Even do the pinky promise. You know, that, that holy, sacred pinky promise. We all know about that, right? I assume all of us know about the sacred pinky promise. You know, when you make that pinky promise, you make sure not to break that pinky promise. Because it's a pinky promise. All right, it's not a a pointy finger promise. It's not a middle finger promise. It's not the ring finger promise. It's not the thumb promise. It's the pinky, the pinky promise. <laughs> That's sacred. Some people are so sacred about pinky promise. They are. Trust me. I met I met people that are like that. Trust trust me. Trust me. But we we are humans. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to break those promises. Why? Because we can't keep a promise like I can. You just you just can't. You can try so hard. But the thing is, you can always say that you're sorry and willing to keep on trying. You know, those exes, they're not willing to try. They're like, we're done. It's over. We're, we're done. That's it. It's like, we're not going to try anymore. It's like, it's over. It's done. CNR, bye bye. And they, and they, and my heart is just. Well, maybe maybe not like that. Maybe it doesn't sound like a farting sound. <laughs> Did I say that in a sermon? No, I didn't. <laughs> but y'all get what I'm saying, right? <laughs> but you know, we're we're gonna make mistakes. But we gotta keep on getting back up. It's like the, uh, if y'all are Marvel people, and I, I, I know this might be going into spoiler territory for some people that haven't watched Endgame, Iron Man, Tony Stark, was devastated. Why? Because he was training Peter Parker. Yes, Spider-Man. Spider-Man was under Iron Man. Iron Man was training Spider-Man and get him to be part of the Avengers in the first place, if y'all remember correctly. But when Thanos snapped, he snapped half of the world away. So half of them were gone, incl including Spider-Man. And Iron Man was just down, saying, like, it's impossible. There's no way. Like, he was so defeated. He was so defeated, saying, like, there's no way. And then Ant-Man comes in, saying, like, hey, I gotta tell y'all, I'm still alive. There's something called the quantum theory. And it works. And Iron Man was was so devastated. He didn't want to believe any of that. He was like, he was done. He was like, there's no way we could fight Thanos. He was just completely out of it. Okay? He was just out. And then after thinking about it, and then went into his lab, he knew that he can do this. 
and that there is a way. And when he figured that out, he was like, holy crap, this can actually work. So he got his confidence back up, even though it felt like he gave up because we're all in that. We, we all get in that point where we feel like we give up, right? Even with video games, Dark Souls, maybe, maybe not Dark Souls, maybe not Dark Souls, maybe, 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 maybe 100% not Dark Souls, okay? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, Dark Souls is a whole entire species itself. Yeah, let's leave let's leave it in, in its own species. Yeah, let's just go with that. <laughs> um, there will be games where I'm struggling and feel like, oh, I can't do this. I can do this. I can I can do this. I can beat this level. You know, I can be able to beat this boss at the end of the dungeon. No matter how many times I died. Don't, sometimes don't you feel like you have that confidence to keep on trying and not just give up? God didn't get Jesus didn't give up on on God. Jesus did not. Even to the point of death, Jesus was still obedient. He was still trying. He did not give up. And neither should we. We shouldn't give up. We might break promises to people, but guess what? Just like that strong, he is our promise keeper. Has God ever broke a promise to you? I would love to hear it. Has, has he ever broke a promise to you? If you say one, you're a liar. If you say two, you're a double liar. <laughs> he has never broke a promise. Just like that Waymaker song. This is why I've been wanting to play that Waymaker song because this is I love that song a lot. It says, "When you're, even if I don't see that you're working, even if I don't feel that you're working, you never stop working. He never stops. Our feelings may change. Our feelings come." and go it's like an emotional roller coaster some days we can be angry some days we can be upset some days we can be sad some days we can be depressed some days we can be happy it just really depends on how we're feeling right and those feelings change but god does not he's still the same then and still the same now our feelings are not the same it's not the same then, and it's not the same now. I can tell you that now. I can I can tell you that right now. You probably wasn't feeling. You're probably not feeling the same way you were feeling about ten years ago. You're probably not. I'm just letting you. I'm just, the feelings change. They come and go. It's like it's like relationships. Girlfriend, boyfriends. They come and go. <laughs> you know. That's that's our feelings. <laughs> it it comes and it goes. You know, but he is our promise keeper. And like I said, we got to keep on getting back up and getting back to the grind. Some things are hard. It did, it's nowhere in the Bible say life is going to be easy. It says in John, in this world, you will have troubles. Would I love for that scripture to be taken out? Absolutely, yes. Would I love for us to never have trouble? Absolutely, yes. But guess what? It's in the Bible. I can't just ignore it just because of how I feel about it. If it says in the Bible, then, it must, then it's true. If it's in the Bible, because we're, we're going to have trouble in this world. It's not rainbows, unicorns, sunshines. Sorry to tell you that, it's not. It never says in the Bible, oh, once you become a follower, everything will become easy. It's not. Even for Jesus, look at his life. Was his life easy? Do you think do you think do you think Jesus' life was easy easy even though he was perfect? I mean he was perfect, right? Do you think his life was easy when he was on earth? No. There were several people that did not like Jesus. And there were several people who did like Jesus. And that's just how it is.
Jesus can get you through anything that you're going through. You got to have that confidence. It's a, it's a relationship. It's like it's a relationship balance. You can't just sit there and pray and hope that God does all the work. It does not work like that. It's the same way in a relationship. If you just sit there and ask your husband or wife, do this while you sit there and absolutely did nothing, see how far that relationship is going to go for you. Okay? See, just, just, just see how far that will go. If you sat there and did nothing, why your partner did everything, ever everything. You're doing the same thing with God. I'm sorry to say this, you well, you are. You're sitting there praying. You're not doing a whole lot on your end because you're expecting God to do everything on His end. Kind of the same way in a relationship. You're doing nothing and you're expecting the other person to do everything for you. Same concept. Because I feel like we get so lazy. I mean, I remember being so, so when you when, when we first come to Jesus, if you're a follower, if you're a disciple, when you first come to Jesus, I'm sure all of us were at this point where we were just really hungry for him. Where we were just asking so many questions, diving deep into his word, trying to understand what is he talking about in this certain passage. And then over the time, I feel like we just get lazy and feel like we just know everything. I'm sorry to tell you this. We don't. I don't. I don't know everything about the Bible. I don't think everyone, anyone will know everything about the Bible because that's false. Because every time you see Scripture, even if you hear it before, you get a different, something different out of it. You start to get a whole different perspective out of it. You're like, oh, i never seen this verse in this way. Oh, oh, that's interesting, and sometimes you can find that interesting, like I do with games. If I, if I, like, once I stop looking at it from this perspective and start looking at another perspective, I'll be like, oh, that makes sense. That's how I could defeat the enemy. Yeah, let's do that instead of going off of that. Yeah, let me just swoom and just go into the enemy space and kill him, so I can claim victory <laughs> in Jesus' name. <laughs> <laughs> but the, like I said gotta be obedient gotta lay down your life for him that's part of obedience and then the second is the promise and the third one is he's the, he's the lion of Judah he is and what I mean by that is that he can he's there for you he will never leave you nor forsake you. No matter how many times you may run away, he won't. He won't fail, just like that song. See, this is why I picked up the worship songs that I did for tonight. This is the reason why I picked up worship music for tonight. Remember that song, Firm by Ocean? My house is built on you. He won't fail. See? Because he won't. Relationship. People might leave you. I mean, how many... Think about that. How many people do you talk... Maybe in high school? How many? I don't talk to anybody from high school. I want to be completely honest. I don't. I barely remember my high school days. I'm, I'm going to be really honest. College... There's like two or three people out of like a good bit that I used to talk to that I never hear from anymore. People will leave you. Why do you think you have exes? Think about it. Going back to relationship status. Why do you think you have exes? They leave you. They deserted you. He or her deserted you. For whatever the reason that may be. But the thing is, Jesus won't. He won't leave you. Even if you run away, even if you do stuff that he doesn't want you to do, he is still there. Doesn't mean that you should just live out your own life. And just saying, I can do whatever I want because 
Jesus is always going to forgive me, right? Yeah, Jesus will always forgive you, but you're supposed to be living a holy lifestyle. That even says that in Peter. Be holy, for I am holy. Does it not say that? Be holy, for I am holy. That's what it says in Peter. Just because God can get forgive you, and there's no forgiveness, forgive there's no there's no limit on how many times he can forgive. There may be a limit on people, but not on him. Jesus will always forgive you, but that doesn't mean to. It doesn't mean just to do whatever you want and that, oh, God will forgive me. You know, He will always forgive me. He's always there for me. So I can just do whatever I want. No. I'm sorry to tell you that. No. You're, 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 you're not. You're supposed to be living a holy lifestyle. You're supposed to be obedient to Him just like Jesus is. You know, He didn't have to get baptized. He's perfect, but yet he did it to set an example. He didn't have to die on the cross, but he did so that we could be washed away our sins. Because if you were in the old days, you had to sacrifice an animal for the forgiveness of your sins. You had to be able to sacrifice the best animal, whether it's like a lamb, sheep, dog, cat, horse, uh, I don't, I, I can't, I'm not going to list off every single animal we will be here all day. And plus, I don't remember all the names of the animals, so that's that. But that's how it was back in the Old Testament. You had to get rid of an animal so that your sins can be forgiven. But since Jesus died, it doesn't have to be like that. And that doesn't mean, oh, I can do whatever I want to do. Just because Jesus is going to forgive me. Because people will have limits on forgiveness. I, To me, I don't. I always forgive people. No matter what they do, because I'm trying to be more like Christ-like. But there's some people out there that will be like, hey, I'm up to here with you. If you do this one more time, I ain't going to forgive you anymore. You cross the line. It's done. It's over. You do this one more time, this mistake one more time, we're done, we're through, I'm no longer forgiving you. Some people have those limits. But to me, I don't. Because I want to be more Christ-like. I even did a whole sermon on that. Is how can you be more Christ-like? Like I said, the first point is being obedient, just like he was. Second is the promises that he keeps. And last is that he's always there for you. He is the line of Judah. I mean, don't you fully believe that today in your heart? I know this may sound simple or this might come as a you know across just a simple reminder because i feel like so many times i like like with my ex and i didn't like this but i would ask when she comes in and listen in i would ask hey babe what did you learn from the service did you learn anything and her response would be nothing every time and I feel like these things that could be like a simple reminder, I feel like it could be just swept under a rug or like college. If some of y'all that might be in college procrastinate. Like, yeah, it's a reminder. I'm going to wait until the last minute until the due date. And the professors might remind you saying like, hey, this project or this paper or, or this homework or this quiz is due on this night. And you be like, yeah, I know, I know. But more likely, you're going to wait until the last minute. I even did that. I am a, I am a pro. When I was in college, I was a pro procrastinator. And right now, I got a bachelor's. 
and it has done nothing for me, but I made it because I was a pro procrastinator. <laughs> I was a very heavy procrastinator, though. But I still got things done, and even though I was stressing out a good bit. But I feel like that's what we do with reminders. And I feel like like people may, like you may heard this several times. And maybe you just need to hear it. Maybe you just need to hear it. Don't let it be a simple reminder or a swept under the rug. Just don't let it be. Don't just slide it under the rug and say, oh, it'd be fine. I'll, you know, I'm going to wait. You know, it's just a reminder. Yeah, I know guys are promise keeper. Like, yeah, I know all this. This this sounds pretty basic stuff. Yeah, I heard it time and time again. But maybe God is trying to speak to you. Because like I said, I like like even in my own life, like, I will even say this about myself here for a quick second, right? In my own life, I feel there there's times where I haven't prayed, and there's times where I haven't really read the Bible as much as I want to. You know, there's, 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 there's stuff like that where I just feel bad, you know? And sometimes I will hear this stuff saying like, yeah, I know this, yeah. But sometimes I look at it as a quick reminder or just slide it under the rug or the carpet, like I just said. Just, just slide it under there. You know? It's like, yeah, I remember, yeah, you know, this proof based stuff, being obedient, yeah, I know that. We're supposed to be, you know, followers and disciple of Christ, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know, he's always there for us, yeah, I do. But do you really, though? Like, that, like that's, that's the thing. I know this is kind of, you know, I know we've been going through the book of Luke, and we're just doing two verses here. But you really got to think about this. You know, because there's, there, like I said, we're humans. That's the thing uh, with each and every one of us. You're a human. You're going to fall. You're going to stumble. Things are just going to happen. That's just, that's just the way of life. The circle of life. <laughs> but it is. So... I really hope that this message reached out to you. I know that I've done sermons that were almost similar to this, but it's just something that, because of that, because I wanted to play the Waymaker song, and ever since I played that, and it just, those these two verses just completely spoke to me. And this is what God, God wanted me to teach on this tonight. I even said, God, this is so basic, though. You know, as we're going through the book of Luke, and he told me that people need to hear this. So, and I was like, all right, okay. So, but I do hope that y'all like this message and able to understand it. As I went in depth and went into more scenarios than other than any other thing else. Um, and I, I just hope that I reached out to you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Home like gracious fire, Lord, I come to your throne, Lord. Lord, help us to be obedient to you. Help us to be able to go far for you, just like we would do for our significant other if we have one. Hopefully we can go far to be obedient to you like you did when you were on the cross, when you're being so obedient. Even on your deathbed, Lord. And hopefully we can be the same way, Lord. And you're, you're a promise keeper. You never broke a promise once. Not a single time. Other people might break their promises, but 
you have it. And we're so thankful. I'm thankful that you're still here. That you're still listening to me. Even if I don't feel it. Even if I don't see it. You never stop working. You never stop. So, I hope that we can be able to retain all this information. And don't let it be a simple reminder, because we're not supposed to be hearers of your word. And let it just be a, you know, just hear it and just let it be a reminder or just go out with our day. No, we're supposed to be doers. We're supposed to put it into action. Put it into practice of how much we follow you and how much we're obedient to you. Even if we stumble, even when we fall, that we can get back up and keep on going again, Lord. And hopefully we can do that, Lord. I hope that we can. So I hope that we'll be able to apply this to whatever areas or aspects of our lives, Lord, through whatever season, storm, trial, that we might be facing, Lord. I hope that we could be able to apply it. How do you ask Holy Grace's name? A man and a a man. Thank you for everyone that has come up and show up. Hey, if this is your first time ever con- um, following God, we want to congratulate you, give you a round of applause. And we have sources, uh, resources and stuff available to you to help you out on your journey. Like maybe you asked, what's baptism? Even though I went over baptism. Maybe you have questions like, what book of the Bible should I start reading? Should I start reading Luke, Genesis? You know, um, is there a perfect denomination? Is there a perfect Bible translation? Like, is, 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 is there a perfect one? Because there's a lot of translations and there's a lot of denominations that could really get confused. So if you have questions like that, we would love to be able to help you and be able to help you out on your journey following Christ for the very first time. And also, not only that, if this is your first time ever here and you find us, we would like for you to fill out this form as well, this this different form. This is the best way to connect with you, get to know you a little bit more about you. If you would like to fill it out with as much information as you feel comfortable of giving. Also, we do want to go into the time of donations. This is not a church. This is not meant to replace a church at all. We are a online ministry for gamers. We are not a church. All right. We're not a church. So we're not asking for offerings or anything like that. We just simply take up donations. If you like to go to it to like a physical building or, you know, if you just would like to donate, that's it. That's And it's up to you if you like to. I don't need money to keep on doing these ministry things. If I did, then I would definitely be a false prophet. But we're supposed to be giving. That is supposed to be us. We are supposed to be contributors and not just consumers. So if you feel like God wants you to contribute uh, financially to this community, all you got to do is reach out to me in DMs on Discord, and I'll get you the PayPal information so that you can be able to donate if you want to. That is only if you would like to donate. That is it. Also, this does not end our time here. What? But highly, I thought you were ending this. What the frick is going on? Well, what we like to do is come into our Discord and fellowship. Where we can talk about saying like, hey, do you want to talk about this sermon or anything that I talked about? Or talk about your day or maybe play some games, you know, or just a simple hangout, fellowship. We like to do that every time when the service is in. So y'all are always welcome into our Discord server. It's basically our fellowship hall where we come together and just, you know, talk and hang out. Maybe you have questions like, what is the Bible? You know, what translation should I read? Or, you know, simple hangout, just like I said earlier. 
And also, do not forget that we will be watching a movie later on tonight in about 20-so minutes, maybe, if people are up to it. I know I've seen this movie plenty of times, but we we're, we also do movie night every night after service as well. And we're going through the Pixar movies, The Incredible. So if you would like to do that, come into our Discord server. We would love to be able to have you. Love, love to be able to have you. But I hope that y'all have a safe and great rest of your night of whatever you're doing tonight. I hope y'all hope y'all go safe. And no one tell you that they didn't love you today. I love you. As we're all brothers and sisters in Christ. Y'all take care and God bless and stay safe.